Listen to your instincts down here. They'll keep you alive. Yeah. What if I have uh, terrible instincts? You'll die. You hey, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. So last week, we got the release of Love and Monsters, starring Dylan O'Brien, Michael Rooker, and Jessica Henwick on VOD and in some theaters. Now before I start my review, if you guys have already seen the movie, feel free to comment below what you thought about it. I'm always interested to know. Now this film really flew under the radar right up until its release. I actually never heard a thing about it until a few days before I actually watched the movie. And because I went into it with zero expectations, I actually really enjoyed it. This movie takes place in a future post-apocalyptic world where insects and animals have mutated into giant monsters and humans have fled into bunkers underground in order to hide from them. But our main character Joel decides to venture above ground and set out on an 85 mile journey through monster infected territory in order to find his high school sweetheart who he hasn't seen since this apocalypse began. Oh, and he kind of has this bad habit of just freezing in place whenever he gets scared, which is like all the time. You can't handle it, Joel. You're shook. You're Look, we're not trying to make you feel bad, Joel. We love you, Joel. But you're unsafe. You're a liability. Okay, why did that speech feel so rehearsed? As far as the effects and the monsters go, I thought they were really good. The CGI mixed in with practical effects were really great. Where most movies would try to hide the monsters in darkness or avoid showing them, this movie comes right out and has them show up in broad daylight. And even so, they were still, if not even more creepy than you would honestly expect them to be. For the most part, you could tell what animals these creatures were based off of. But the production really had a lot of fun in mutating these things into their larger, more monstrous abominations. But the real strength of this movie was its cast. Dylan O'Brien was phenomenal in this movie. Personally, I found that he's gotten better and better with every role he's taken on, and this one was my favorite performance from him by far. I found his character very believable in all stages of the movie, from the scared and timid boy at the beginning, to the hopeful adventurer, to the full-blown hero once the movie ends. Oh, that was awesome. Oh, I feel like Tom Cruise. <laughs> But what you really don't expect from him are the emotional moments throughout this film. The scene with the robot is a prime example. That scene had no business being as sincere and as heartfelt as it was, but the movie took its time to pause and reflect on the real cost of this apocalypse. We've gotten glimpses of the past devastation and the reminders of people who didn't make it this far. Uh, my dad got killed back when we lived in the subway station. But in this scene, the emotional toll really comes through for his character, and it's one of Dylan's best moments. And of course, his co-stars were great as well, most notably Michael Rooker, who really just looked like he was playing the post-apocalyptic survivor version of Michael Rooker. And his partner, an eight-year-old girl, really helps to lighten the mood. They're only in the movie for about less than 20 minutes, and I would have really liked to see more of them, as they were great. Bad asses. Yeah, I know. And with those two, I can't help but feel like there's another story just begging to be told about the two of them and their travels. Now the third act does get a little bit predictable with the antagonist just thrown into the mix at the last minute. They're very easy to see through and really provide no stakes for the audience who just hasn't even seen them before. But I guess they were necessary in order for our main character to finally rise to the challenge beyond just getting lucky and stumbling his way out of messes. But the biggest thing, however, that immediately became apparent to me while watching this movie was the feeling that I had seen this story before. And as soon as Rooker showed up, I realized why. He was a spitting image of Woody Harrelson from Zombieland. And then I realized this whole movie was basically Zombieland with mutated insects instead of mutated humans. Both of them are about woefully inept young men in way over their head as they try to make it to a place they've only ever heard of, barely managing to survive each step of the way. Then they're surrounded by the love interest, the young girl who's just along for the ride, and the older guy who really seems to thrive in this new world. 
They've both even got lessons and rules in order to survive the apocalypse. Lesson two, you get a hot meal or a good night's sleep, not both. But while that film was more of a team affair, this was really a more personal journey, following a single character as he strikes out on his own for something that he wants. Sure, he meets these characters along the way, but like their screen time indicates, they're just crossing paths for a moment. And even with all of the emotional weight that hangs over every character in this movie, it still manages to keep its tone light and optimistic. And because there was so much depth to these characters, honestly a lot more than you would have expected, the audience really cares about them at every stage. Even the dog. We get to travel through the story from our main character's perspective as he learns to survive, while also learning to become the better version of himself. It's a journey that plays out nicely from start to end as the person we see at the end of it all really feels earned. Yes, this whole movie did feel very familiar as it brought up similar tones from a number of other different monster movies, but that really doesn't take anything away from it. It still did its job of being a very entertaining film to watch. The actors were great, the monsters were terrifying, and the journey was fun. And who doesn't love an adventure with a dog through the apocalypse? I would definitely recommend watching Love and Monsters if you get the chance. And when you're done, don't forget to let me know if you loved it, hated it, or were somewhere in between. Listen to your instincts out here. They'll keep you alive. Yeah, what if I have uh, terrible instincts? You'll die. Thank you guys for watching. Do me a favor by subscribing while you're here. I've got new videos coming out every Friday. But until next time, have a great day and don't forget to watch a great movie. Bye. It's a long journey, kid. I hope you know what you're doing. He definitely doesn't. Snow spiders will probably get him. That's not a good way to go. They will tear him apart. Nah, he'll figure it out. Possibly.